Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the ASUS M5A99FX Pro R 2.0 motherboard and this is part of the review where we take a look at the UEFI BIOS utility and what the screen you're seeing here is the easy mode function this is the default one, this is a simple overview of what is uh, adjustable in the, through the UEFI you have of course your main setting here, system performance, power saving, normal, and ASUS optimal. Also your voltages, your fan speeds, your current settings, your motherboard type, your memory type, your boot priority at the bottom, your shortcuts, advanced mode, boot menu, and default. And of course exit. Of course all the cool ones are here accessed in the advanced mode, so let's go through that. Quickly switch to that for a lot more options, especially for old clocking, you want to access this version. The main page, you have the main information here. Most of it's grayed out except for the system, system date and system time and a security where you can uh, put passwords in. And of course, the next option is where you, you will make the bulk of your adjustments in uh, when you're overclocking, especially. By default, these will all be auto except for this one. I've, I've set it to DDR3 1600 megahertz since I was running benchmarks at 1600 megahertz memory. But uh, you can, by default, these will all be auto and the EPU is disabled but you can of course make those changes you have the AI overclock tuner here you have the DOCP and manual manual of course self-explanatory manual adjustments DOCP if you're familiar with Intel they have the XMP profiles this is similar to that it will detect what is the XMP profile of that RAM and ASUS, the ASUS motherboard will apply that particular uh, memory frequency and adjust your other settings to that as well as you can see it already detected as DDR3-1600 and you can just whenever you, if you don't want to do that you can do it manually you can input the DRAM times manually DRAM dividers manually and see that it opens up adjustments here for the CPU ratio CPU bus frequency and the PCI frequency PCIe frequency bus frequency of course this is pretty much your base clock and your CPU ratio your multiplier those are uh, of course different motherboards different terms but you get the idea what those are those are the two main uh, options you can uh, make adjustments and it will significantly increase or decrease your uh, your your clock speeds. Of course, uh, the we are using the FX8350 and the FX8350 is the highest end currently uh, pile driver or Vichera processor from AMD's FX processor line, and they usually uh, they actually are unlocked processors, so you can't adjust the multiplier. But if you don't have an unlocked, uh, I believe all their processors now are unlocked, unlike the old Athlon ones and the old Phenom. Well, they have non black editions, but these ones, uh, you can adjust this uh, if you have an unlocked processor. And the other options here memory frequency, see a divider there from 800 all the way to 2400, 1600, CPU and frequency. See, uh, most of the, of the lower ones are unsupported. Leave it auto if you're not sure what you're doing. And 3200 is the maximum. HD link speed, of course, uh, these are more if you want to adjust the uh, bus frequency. Make those adjustments. And CPU spread, spread spectrum. PCIe spread spectrum. Enable and disable. Enable and disable automatically as well. You have your EPU power saving mode disabled by default, but if you want to save uh, power and uh, uh, you can always enable that. Of course, there will be some, the performance will be a little bit different compared to high performance uh, preset. And OC tuner is the automatic overclock. Uh, if you're familiar with Turbo V Evo for the software, which is the automatic software overclock for ASUS, this is through the UFI, the, they call it OC tuner. And next one is the DRAM timing control. Where you will make adjustments here for the timings of your RAM. Once you've set a divider, you can set here. You can type it in directly. And the good thing about it is that you have the uh, your dual channel in there. It detects what what the ch the channel A and channel B, what the timings that are being detected are. So you can do that. You can check primary put in the, those timings in there. All the way to the bottom. Have your timing command rate, fresh rate and DRAM driving control you can make your these are a lot more advanced options for DRAM overclocking this is not is it's not often that you find the, this amount of uh, options available to you especially for DRAM overclocking on an AMD system uh, in fact this is the only motherboard I've seen 
well not the only motherboard I'm pretty sure the higher end Asus motherboard also has this function since this is actually their uh, one of their more affordable mainstream motherboard from their newly re re-released AM3 Plus R2.0 uh, motherboards so uh, as you can see there are plenty of uh, advanced DRAM adjustments, driving adjustments, you know, overclocking Digi Plus power control is nested in there for again overclocking more of the CPU and a DRAM as well for the bottom of course Asus uses all digital uh, power control as they call it Digi Plus power control unlike other um, uh, unlike other motherboard manufacturers which use a hybrid version or I believe some use a hybrid version most of them now but Asus has a fully digital plus power control you can adjust the load line calibration here of course, you won't want any drooping when you're overclocking, especially when trying to reach that 5 GHz overclock from regular or medium high all the way to ultra ex to ultra high and extreme. If you're pushing, of course, for 5 GHz, I would suggest ultra high and extreme, depending on your overclock, depending on your cooling. Uh, CPU NB, low line calibration, same thing, except with a little, uh, little less uh, options here. You have auto, regular, high, and extreme. CPU current capability. Because that 140 is not recommended uh, since it's, it is red. These are, of course, recommended only for advanced or LN2 cooling users. You have your more options here for CPU and B current capability auto 100, 110, all the way to 130. CPU power phase control optimized extreme and manual adjustments. See, same, similar to the CPU manual adjustments, it will open up more options at the bottom. Under it, you have the manual adjustments, fast, ultra-fast, medium, and regular. Let's see what gets disabled if you turn to standard. It goes back up there. All adjustments. And you also have CPU voltage frequency. Manual will open up uh, VRM fixed frequency mode. You can type it in there. And you have VRM spread spectrum. It's enabled. CPU power duty control, T-probe, or optimized or extreme. You have CPU power response control, auto regular medium all the way to ultra fast, auto the same thing, ultra, medium regular fast ultra fast for the CPU and power phase response control, CPU power thermal control from 130 minimum all the way to 151. You have your DRM current capability 100 to 130, DRM voltage frequency from 300 to 500. And DRM power phase control, the preset for optimized and extreme. And let's go back to the top part. You have options here for the voltages at the bottom, separated by the divider. You have your offset mode by default for the CPU, offset with your plus or offset with a minus, or you can type it in manually directly, automatically. Uh, to access the auto mode is actually manual mode as well. But you can type it in directly if you want that, or you can run uh, offset mode, which also has an auto mode. You can make adjustments here with the CPU offset, CPU and uh, CPU NB offset, CPU VDDA, DRM voltage, CPU NV. You can increase or decrease, of course, with a plus or minus sign, or just type it in manually. You can see there at the right side, it shows you what the minimum and maximum values are, and also the increments at which it allows you to adjust to these particular voltage settings has plenty for a mainstream motherboard uh, is uh, very interesting and the next step is for the advanced option where you can access the features on your motherboard uh, you have CPU configuration cooling quiet enabled C1E core, core C6 state if you're master mode basically power saving options you want to disable this if you're trying to get a high daily overclock of course and uh, North Bridge functions you have IO MMU memory configuration Initial graphic adapter, of course, we uh, we are only to PCIe graphics or PCI and Southbridge PET SATA configuration. It shows you that it detects the SSDs or the hard drives you have installed on each SATA port, including the eSATA. Interesting to note that the you have SATA configuration here uh, is nested. That unlike other motherboards, the the ASUS well, I have, I'm using the latest version of the UEFI, which is 1101, 1101. And unlike other motherboard manufacturers, the the, the default setting is AHCI, which is uh, which is actually preferable compared to IDE, which is the old model. 
Uh, I believe some other manufacturers still use IDE. I actually just tested another 990FX board last time. It always defaults to IDE, and uh, whenever you forget that, of course, your system won't boot. So it always defaults to HCI whenever, whenever you load optimized default, so that's a good thing. You have Smart Status Check also enabled by default. You have your ESP ports here for, uh, for uh, external SATA port. Enable them uh, all across the board from 1 to 5. Disable, of course, just the eSATA. Say enabled. And look back here. You have the USB configuration. Detects if you have other USB devices installed there, it detects that. You have also legacy USB support for older legacy uh, USB devices. USB 3.0 support, of course, enabled. So USB configuration. You have more detailed configuration here. You have up to 14, I believe. Let's see here. Yes, indeed, you can disable each of the 14 USB ports individually, which are powered by, of course, the Southbridge uh, 950, SB950 from AMD. You have CPU core on off function, CPU core activation. These are more for, uh, I don't think, I don't know if they have, uh, I haven't tested the FX processor if they have cores disabled, but I believe the, I'm pretty sure the, the, the some of the phenom too, the triple cores can be become quad core, the, uh, dual core can become even quad core. These core activation features. These are backwards compatible with AM3. You notice AM3 Plus, you have the onboard device configuration. Of course, you can disable the extra Asmina 1061 SATA ports if you want here. You can all disable the Asmina 1042 controller in the rear or the front and also disable the battery charging support or enable it. It's actually disabled by default. The Realtek 8111 uh, LAN, Gigabit LAN, serial port uh, configuration in here as well. Here's your IQ settings. You can change the Southridge HD Azalea configuration for AG Audio. And let's go back. The APM for the power management. Have your PRA is disabled by default. Most of these are disabled by default. Of course, this is designed for performance. But if you want to, uh, if you don't mind uh, suffering a little bit of performance, you can adjust these, of course, to uh, improve the power consumption. And network stack, disabled by default. You can enable it here. And the next tab we have here is the monitor. Allows you to monitor the voltages, temperatures. If you have more than one fan, I only have the CPU fan installed here, as you can see, that's why it's uh, not reading the other chassis fan, but you can access that in here. I have disabled it, but you can enable. Let me just enable it so you can see what it looks like. It opens up options here for the what the low, lead, low speed limit is. If you don't want it to dip between below 600 RPM, or if you have a very, very efficient PWM fan, you can just set it to 100. It's perfectly fine, or ignore it completely. And you have the fan profile for standard, silent, turbo, or manual. See so if you get manual, of course, it opens up more options here for the uh, duty cycle, max, min, and the upper and lower temperature thresholds. So disable that. And then the boot. For uh, more about options when you're booting, you have your fast boot, USB 2.0 support, rather, no, USB support for when you're booting. Uh, Personalization or full initialization or disabled completely. Of course, uh, full for in full initialization will slow or, slow down your booting a bit. You know, same with the PS2 keyboard and mouse support. Um, the M5A 998FX Pro 2.0 is actually actually has a separate doesn't have that hybrid uh, PS2 keyboard and PS2 mouse. It has separate PS2 and separate keyboard uh, PS2 keyboard and separate PS2 mouse port so that is very cool but you can disable it here if you want to do that network stack driver support normal next boot after AC power loss normal boot you have the full screen logo if you're especially if you use the ASUS my logo you can change that here you want you can enable or disable it here if you want post delay time allows you to uh, of course input the hit the delete key for your boot since uh, it boots pretty fast now especially with Windows 8 and SSD but of course the M5A990FX Pro 2.0 motherboard actually has that onboard direct BIOS uh, booting so you don't need to uh, even hit uh, to hammer on the delete or F2 key to access that direct key enabled of course that's what I was talking about you go, go to BIOS setup or disable it completely if you don't want to access that you have your 9 trap response boot lock num state on. Of course, most people prefer it to be on because it's annoying when you're making adjustments with the plus and minus sign and have the number values if it's disabled. 
and with F1 enabled, Force BIOS, optional ROM is just uh, set up most advanced mode. This is the advanced mode you're looking at. Easy mode was the simple screen we were looking at earlier. CSM compatibility support module in here. Set automatic by default. Secure boot. Allow you to secure boot your OS if you have um, OS there. And your boot priorities. See here, uh, you can boot over at the bottom, and well, you can set the hardware priorities at the top in here. Uh, it detects which drives are installed, and you can set adjust those options in there, which one has the priority on the top. I've actually disabled the two ones. I have, I have, uh, I only set it to one in there, so it doesn't. My other SSD does interfere, but there's, there was three options here for the boot options before I, I set that in there. And the last two options you have easy flash utility allows you to, of course, update your, uh, UFI, for just plugging in a. Uh, a USB drive with the with the uh, uh, update itself. You can I, I believe you can even browse uh, through that or browse your local drive, so you don't need to put a external drive in there. But you have the ASUS SPD information for reading your memory. Being on a slot, you have the JDEC and XMP values. We don't really need this anymore since so the AI tweaker actually reads it directly once you're putting it in, so that's very convenient. Either way, you can still want to, if you want to take a screenshot from here, you can do that. Shortcut so, uh, there. Uh, you have the ASUS OC profile. If you're uh, overclocking or just setting to default, you can make it or making, uh, for example, you put in a different kind of RAM and you don't want to go back through the hassle of setting the DRAM timings and stuff like that. You can just save an option here by up to eight banks in here. So that's plenty of information, plenty of space to save your uh, profiles. You can label, put the label, save a profile, or load from the profile all in one area here and the tool option and of course when you click exit you have the option to load and optimize defaults save changes and reset, discard changes and exit and go back to easy mode, launch the file shell from file system device or you can, typically you would save and refresh, reset if you make changes so and that pretty much covers our overview of the ASUS M5A990 FX Pro R2.0 motherboard and now go back to the rest of the review. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.